Good day. Oh man, ripped my jacket. Ah, thanks for joining us. Today, I'm gonna to be chopping the top on this rare 1953 Chevy truck. done this before so probably not going to turn out very good that's okay So you can see there's a bit of a gap here uh, because we had to lengthen the door top due to the angle of the pillar here. Uh, so what I like to do is I just take the piece that I cut from here and then trim it down and plonk it up here. Uh, depending on the car or truck that you're doing, uh, some of these will need some trimming or manipulating. Uh, but on these advanced design trucks, they seem to be fairly close, uh, you know, the right shape just about all the way through. So that'll uh, work out just fine. Okay, I got both these door tops uh, tack welded back together here. And the way that I, I made sure both sides are the same is I just drew a, uh, a grid on here every two inches. And then I marked where my original cut was here and then just built my grid off of that. So you can see I did the same thing up here. And then what I did is I just, to each point on the grid, I measured up and then just transfer those measurements over to this side. And uh, whenever you're doing any measuring on a car, uh, even on a modern car, you always wanna double check and verify. So I always measure from at least two points. So we measured from here 
to here. Uh, but if you look here, this is not uh, exactly fitted together 100%. You know, there's some variation as to how that was assembled at the factory. So that's why we always want to verify our measurements. So we go here to here, here to here. And then I also measure from here to the very top of the door. And then we kind of find the sweet spot. And um, basically all I had to do really is just find the center, like directly up from where I split the top here, go up from there. And then what I do is I just put each half on, measure here to here, make sure it's the same. And then I tack weld it on and then I put my filler piece in and everything else from side to side was bang on. So I could make a wooden template. I've seen a lot of folks do that, which would be get it 100%, I guess, but I just didn't really see the point. As long as it's here, you know, if it's all the same from here to here, all different ways, then, you know, I'm not gonna worry about it too much. Thing is, every time I get my glass cut, uh, there's a pretty wide variance there. Like it's, some days uh, you get it on a Friday and it's like all over the place. Um, and then some days it's really pretty decent, but it just depends on the day. But chances are the door tops are gonna be more exact than the glass when I do get it cut. Just, that's just the way it goes. Uh, you see, we do have a bit of an issue here now. Uh, there's a big gap here, so uh, we're gonna have to like weld some rod on here or something to fix that up. The other thing uh, is we did mention using the piece from here in here, so you can see it's a pretty close match. Um, we are gonna have to add a little, uh, either a little bit of weld or just a piece of rod up here just to make up this extra little bit here, but other than that, it worked out really good. I'm not worried about the misalignment on the bottom here because there is a molding that fits all into here. So all of this is covered up, so it would be pointless to do anything with that. Just uh, again, you can see the variance in uh, in this lip here. They weren't too concerned at the factory, so I'm not gonna get too concerned either. I know 99% of the people watching just wanna see me cut the roof off, but there are some people that apparently see value in me explaining what I'm doing. I know I wanna just cut the roof off too, but I'm gonna just uh, try and explain my process here and what we're doing and how we're laying this out just for anybody that actually wants to wants to learn something, I guess, or learn what not to do. This is probably a good example of what not to do. So uh, what we did here, as you can see, we've started laying out our, our cut lines on the roof here. What I did is I took this, uh, this stainless steel uh, straight edge, I guess, it's kind of flexible, and I just laid it out on the roof here. And what I'm looking for is just uh, where it kind of stops touching the roof here without me, you know, forcing it or whatever. So if I just lay it on the roof and just let it relax naturally, it kind of comes exactly to where we laid out this line here. So what that's telling me is just where this, uh, the crown of this roof is starting to, to change shape and transition into this shape back here. What we don't want to do is go right through the middle. The main reason is that there's no strength in the center of this roof. This is a very low crown through the middle here. So if we try welding that, it's going to be a nightmare to try and get that straight again. Whereas here we have the crown of this roof is starting to transition into this higher crowned area here, which has a lot more strength. So this is going to be an easier place to weld it. Obviously, because this is kind of the ideal point, we can't just come straight down here. And I also didn't want to come straight down here because this is also kind of a curved shape here. And uh, where I determined to kind of split and lengthen it is kind of the flattest point in that curve. So we have the best chance of that working out. And it's the same spot where we added to the door here. So I just came straight up from where I added to the door and we're going to cut through here and then we're going to cut through here because this cut is largely just going to be to allow the roof to slide back. I just placed it through kind of the, the center or roughly whatever of this particular 
radius here. Um, I've seen it done all kinds of different ways on these trucks. I've seen guys go right through the flat or they've come right down through here, but uh, I decided to just put it here. Uh, we'll see how it works out again. I think in my mind it'll work out and it'll be a lot easier to finish this weld out because it's largely just to allow the roof to slide back. So weld going through a high crown, easier to finish out than going through a low crown. So that's why we, we went through there. I've also got really good access to the back so I can hammer and dolly this later. So again, we'll see how this works out. There are two other things we did to prepare this. Um, in the previous video, you saw me remove this uh, A-pillar cap here. So this was spot welded on and then you can see some, some ugly welds where it was welded at the factory and let it over. So I just cut it at the factory joints there. And what we're going to do is there's a factory uh, seam here, or factory weld, I guess. We can open the door. Ow. Idiot. So there's a factory weld right here where this uh, upper part of the roof joins to this post. So we're just going to cut it right at that factory weld. And then we'll chop it down. We weld it right at the factory seam. And... Uh, you know, it should be as strong as uh, it was originally. And then once we get this lowered down, we'll just trim our uh, material off this post and then paint the inside of everything, plonk the post back on, uh, plug weld it back on, re-weld it at the factory joints. And the whole, the whole thing will, will be just as it uh, came from the factory or as, as close as we can get it. Final prep thing we did here is uh, I made a, uh, a profile gauge. I just bent a 90 and then I, uh, I used my stretcher to, to curve it. And what I did is I just made a, a profile of this radius of the roof here. Once I cut this here, this is all just gonna go all wavy and it's gonna be you know, I'm not going to know what the shape was was uh, supposed to be. You know, I might be able to get it fairly close. But because I have this information now, I know exactly what shape that this crown has to be again. And it's just going to make it a lot easier for widening this and, and fitting it all back together. And then doing the final planishing and everything. I don't have to try and guess what shape this roof is. I have all the information I need right here. I was going to... Uh, drill some holes and just click it in place just to kind of hold it, but uh, uh, It's gonna get in the way and Also, I ordered a bunch of clicos and they're supposed to be here two weeks ago and they still haven't shown up So we're just gonna cowboy up and just cut it and just use this as a as a gauge or a guide I guess when we start uh, trying to piece it back together. I also uh, went ahead and uh, Holding the camera crooked, but just you have to trust me, I marked a center line on this roof here and uh, I'm not too sure um, if I'm going to have to widen the roof here, just the back of it, just ever so slightly uh, because this does curve in like this. So I don't know. Uh, I think they had to widen it a little bit on the dream truck, but we'll see if we can just fend angle it and then manipulate it into shape. Uh, if we have to widen it a quarter or half inch or whatever, we'll widen it. Not a big deal. Okay, we're uh, finally ready to cut the roof off. Um, you can see I got my lucky chicken shirt on. My mom just got me this for Christmas. It's pretty sweet, eh? Hey? But uh, about the way I feel right about now, so uh, let's get to it.
Just want to take a quick moment to show you the reason that we templated this. You can see now that the cuts have been made, it's all just uh, kind of collapsed onto itself because it's lost its, its strength, seeing as how some idiot made a giant cut through the middle. So this is just kind of flopping around, this is flopping around, but uh, you know, now we know at least what shape it was supposed to be before, so it doesn't really matter. I just thought, uh, thought I'd show you that there is some method to the madness here. Chicken truck, Landau edition. I don't know folks, should we just leave it like this? Hey, so you're probably wondering why am I drilling out the spot welds here? Um, well, the plan for the back of this roof here is we're going to uh, do our weld seam down at the base here. Um, and the reason for that is I find it's, it's easier to finish out the weld when it's down here closer to an area of strength. If you go through here, uh, you get a weld in the middle of the panel and it's really hard to, to make this all transition nicely. You usually end up having to do pie cuts through here, which just makes a mess. And then you end up with a huge area that needs a bunch of work. So uh, I've had good luck just going down here when I chop stuff. Um, and then the problem is though, is if I just take everything out of the bottom here, this post here, it dramatically tapers down through this area. So it's thinner here um, than up here. So if I just cut it out of here, then I'm gonna end up with a weird transition on this inner structure here, which doesn't seem like a big deal, but this is where the wind lace will fit, the seal for the cab door. So if this is all wonky and weird, then the wind lace won't fit as well as it should. It never really fits great on these trucks, but uh, it'll fit a lot worse and we'll just end up with a stupid looking lump here. Um, whereas if I go up here, which is where I cut the door and take it out of here, this is, this is pretty much the same width here. So it'll be a little cleaner if I go here and then we'll just do an offset cut and instead of going through here and just coming down and doing a weld seam here, which I've done in the past, I figured it'd be easier just to drill out these, uh, what is it, six spot welds, and then just drop the whole thing down, cut it off of here, and then re-weld the spot welds, and it should be a little less welding. None of this is making sense, uh, don't worry. I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around it too. Hopefully when this all uh, starts getting stitched back together, it'll, it'll make a little bit more sense. Or it won't work at all and we'll, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the plan is if this doesn't work. It's not going to be pretty though. <laughs> Some uh, nice uh, GM craftsmanship for you. Um, I think only about uh, one of the spot welds out of however many in this entire post here were actually connected. See, it's just just hanging out here, so we'll have to do redo these welds as well. The welds are here, but they didn't actually connect to anything, so kind of a, a typical scenario on these old vehicles they're uh, they're not always put together all that well especially if they were built on a Friday
Uh, this entire side of the cab is not actually attached to the inner structure. Hopefully you can see that moving. It's completely split away. So uh, we're gonna have to throw a couple of a couple of welds in this real quick just to kind of keep it in place. Kind of makes you wonder how many fully restored trucks are running around with only one or two spot welds holding them together. Probably wouldn't want to ever get in a wreck or anything. Anybody know any good uh, YouTube videos to watch on how to reattach a roof? Uh, leave a suggestion in the comments. I'm uh, I'm in over my head. This is uh, things are things aren't looking too good right now. But that's okay. You know we got a we got a positive attitude. That's all you really need. Probably just saw me uh, take the saws all here. Do a little cut here on both sides. That's just a relief cut to allow the pillar to lean in. Um, I was hoping to get away with only doing a relief cut on the bottom, but if we uh, if if I look at it, it's just going to be too much of an angle just doing the cut on the bottom, like it's just not gonna jive. So I'm gonna have to do a relief cut up here through the roof here on both sides. And that's gonna allow that roof to relax outwards. And it's just gonna help this, this pillar all kind of line up. And then it just kind of equalizes out that angle. This is just, it's just too harsh and it's just not gonna, it's gonna cause too many issues with the door alignment and stuff. So not a big deal, just wanted to do a quick toss on. This is just a rough mock up here to see. And uh, there you go, we gotta make more cuts, oh well.
Alrighty, well, uh, I've uh, just spent what seems like an eternity staring at this thing, making little cuts and adjustments here and there. And uh, there's a couple tack welds holding the front section on. We just roughly threw the back section of the roof on, but I, I'm finally, I'm finally happy with with how this looks. This is uh, actually really happy with with how it's coming together. Uh, it's basically exactly finally what I had in, in my mind. It's kind of just the right amount of chop to make it, it look chopped without it looking squashed. Yeah, it all kind of, kind of works for at least what I have in my mind. Obviously it's uh, everybody has a different uh, vision of what they want, but uh, this is getting really close to the vision I have. So, um, I, uh, I make things very uh, complicated for myself. This is not the, uh, the easy, fast way to do a chop. This is the way uh, to do a chop to get the desired result that I'm after. So this is, is not easy, but it's just, I'm doing this not, I'm not doing this because it's easy. I'm doing this because uh, I want it to look a certain way and I don't really care what it takes to get to that stage. Just, I have to get to that stage. So. There's a whole pile of work that has to go into this back section. So I think we're going to save that for the next video. Um, you can see that uh, there's just not enough metal here to make this all kind of come together. And you know, we're in too far here. 
So there's a couple different ways of fixing that and I will cover that in the next video. Um, there's also the back window. I'm not sure if I'm just going to leave it alone the way it is or if I'm going to uh, to make it slightly larger and reshape the edges so that it uh, it matches the same angle of the outside of the roof because if I just widen it it it's not going to look right it's going to be vertical here and then angled here so the roof or the back window would have to come at this angle and that basically involves completely remaking a new back window opening which is a lot of work not that that matters if that's what we decide to do then we'll make it happen but uh, that's a possibility or we just leave it as is I'm not sure yet but I do think you know it does look kind of out of place here it's like a rectangle and then this curves in so it doesn't but anyways future problems um, but yeah this uh, this whole profile here it took a lot of fiddling around to get this right and to get things where it needs to be unfortunately like I said I'm a master of making way too much work for myself um, we ended up taking uh, three inches out of the back and two and seven eighths out of the front roughly uh, give or take a sixteenth of an inch or here or there and the reason for that is uh, these roof tops uh, they have a, a forward lean to them you can kind of see it here on this stock door you can see how it it angles down and uh, while that's okay for a hot rod this is kind of a custom an early style custom where we're going to kind of have like the speedboat stance where everything kind of flows flows back into the rear so i didn't want the roof angling like this and then the back angling like that and then it kind of having two different angles it all kind of has to have like a teardrop type shape the challenge with these trucks of course is that they're the cabs are quite short so you know you can't really get a full teardrop action effect um you know without making it look like it's been stepped on in the back so basically what i did is i just took an extra eighth inch out of the back and that just equalizes this shape and uh this this did take you know a lot of uh fiddling around to get this right but uh now that it's it's all kind of roughed in i'm finally happy with that shape so um it's it's exactly exactly what i had in my mind so pleased with that um the benefit to getting the door shape or the door tops done first is i can i can get that shape which kind of dictates the shape of the rest of the roof the challenge with uh doing a little bit more of a chop in the back is now it's going to make aligning this back section all the more difficult so there's going to be some more slicing there for sure but is what it is now uh, on these posts here um, we could have gotten away technically by just doing the one pie cut at the bottom see the roof did fit back on but uh, there was no way the roof was going to stay tangent um, without doing these cuts so no matter what I was I was going to have to do these cuts to make it all technically it would go back on but you know, keeping this angle and this angle on the same plane, um, what would have happened is this would have been kicked in like this, and this would have come up. So there would have been a weird transition from this going into this, and it just never would have looked right. So that's uh, this was definitely essential. I thought originally I could get away without it, but it just, you know, more work, but, you know, less work later because I don't have to look at something that, isn't tangent you can see this is going to be fairly tangent here and just because of the different angles coming together i am going to have to heat up the inside of this door post and just tickle it in just i don't know whatever this is so that's not a big deal we can uh, we can get that sorted out fairly easy there's also uh, a big gap here because uh the drip rail we drilled out the spot welds and we just removed the drip rail from this see here's the the drip rail here for the the passenger side and we drilled out old spot welds so we can rebend and re-weld this back on but i do need to uh, leave a bit more gap here um, just to allow that to fit back in we don't want to get our perfect quarter inch gap and then weld this on because by the time that's back on then uh, the door top won't fit anymore so just doing this cut here um, it allows this whole entire roof to just kind of relax and pull out 
So uh, again, um, we could have forced it with this, but it just never, all the different angles never would have, uh, would have worked together again. So again, uh, this isn't the easy way to do this. This is uh, the way to do it, to get it to where I think it should be. Handy thing about having this, uh, this center post here is that uh, I just use this as my center mark. So I cut it off the top and then just brought it back down and you know, it, it's centered. So pretty easy to get the roof centered again at the front. Um, an old trick, I think is Bill Hines who came up with that or the trick is just to weld. If you don't have one of these in the center, you can just weld like a, a bar here and then two braces and then there's your center line for the front. Then at the, the back here, um, before I cut anything, I did mark my center line here and into here. So that makes aligning the back very easy. Uh, I did the same thing at the bottom. You can't, the center line is kind of, can you see it in there? There it is. Anyways, uh, it's there. So yeah, we, we marked a center line through here. So that just makes aligning the back section easy and aligning it to here. So we know everything's going to be centered. See, there's a, a quite a substantial difference there so uh, yeah yeah we're uh, definitely one step closer to uh, recreating the iconic uh, chicken truck that uh, Waylon Jennings drove and followed that bird I'll just uh, put a picture in here of uh, the inspiration and uh, what we're trying to replicate so you can all see and uh, yeah I think we uh, I think we nailed it for sure uh, and uh, so I think this is probably a good place to kind of end this one. Uh, this is only part one of a several part series, obviously, but I think it's still, it's, it's starting to take enough shape where it looks like something, but it's still chaotic enough where we can attract all the keyboard experts and, uh, and uh, all the haters and, and that kind of thing. So that's always fun. Everybody's always got a better, easier way of doing things. And maybe it is better, maybe it is easier, maybe it's faster but it's not going to be what, uh, how I want it to be. So this is, uh, this is going to be what it takes to get it to where I think it should be. Oh yeah. Also, uh, for any of the people upset about us cutting up such a pristine original truck and butchering it up and everything else, uh, don't worry. Uh, once we're done butchering it up, I'm going to, I'm saving all the little pieces I cut out. So we're going to fully restore this truck back to original after we're done customizing it. So don't worry. It'll, it'll all be returned back to stock eventually. So uh, thanks so much for watching part one and I uh, hope you'll all tune in again for part two when we sort out the, this nightmarish uh, rear section. Um, the, the cutting and hackery is, is only really getting started. So uh, we're, we're definitely in over our heads, but we'll, uh, we'll get it sorted out eventually.